The tall, cool blonde sauntered into my office with a thoughtful expression. I would have preferred a cup of coffee. It had been a long night. My name's Kate, she said, and I'm in trouble. They're always in trouble. That's why they come to me. I'm a writer crash tester. After 17 years and 32 novels of my own, I can shake down a plot, twist a sentence like a pretzel, and slam a paragraph against a wall until it begs mercy. I take no prisoners. I brook no excuses. And now I'm on the case of the ghostly girls. Kate needed answers and needed them fast. She handed me a sheaf of pages and said, They're talking. They're doing. Things are happening. But I'm just not feeling the love. Where is this going wrong? So I started reading. I don't know what you're complaining about, Rachel. You'll probably ace it without even trying. Lisa took another bite from her sandwich. I scoffed. You know I study. I have to if I'm going to get into the school I want. What's wrong with Washington Lee, she asked around a mouthful of ham and cheese, still managing to look exotically beautiful. I suddenly felt very strange, awkward yet familiar, like that dream where you find yourself on stage and can't remember what you're supposed to be doing. Aware of Lisa's expectant look, I nodded. Yeah. Yeah, what? You want to stay in Lexingtono? I glanced around, trying to figure out what was happening to me when I saw him. A man, no, a boy, across the park on a bench. He stared directly at me, his face expressionless. I looked away quickly. Um, I don't know for sure yet. I want to keep my options open. Lisa raised an eyebrow. What are you staring at? She turned, dragging one leg over so she straddled the bench. Ooh, he's cute. I braved another look. He was attractive, but wouldn't stop staring. Too bad he's taken, she added, twisting back around. What do you mean? She snorted and gave a sarcastic half-smile. Well, I don't think that's his sister. I looked again. There was no one with him. On the next bench, though, a couple was making out. No, not him. Lisa turned her head again and scanned the park. That old guy? Her eyes narrowed. Rachel, are you okay? Then I realized why she couldn't see him. He was dead. Just kidding. I forced a laugh. Yeah, too bad he's taken. You ready to go? I grabbed my bag and stood, trying to shake the ghost's stare. His expression had softened, and he acknowledged me when he caught my gaze. There was something very intense about him, besides his unwavering eye contact, that made him difficult to ignore. The writing is smooth, the story strong, the dialogue realistic. But the characters are barely there. Why are they so faded? Let's take a look at the dialogue here. We start with, I don't know what you're complaining about, Rachel. Um, I, I know You know I want to study. What's wrong with Washington Lee? Okay, we have a moment here of, of genuine beauty. I suddenly felt very strange, awkward yet familiar, like that dream where you find yourself on stage and can't remember what you're supposed to be doing. This is excellent. But then we go back to, yeah, yeah what? You want to stay in Lexingtono? I don't know if you're sure yet. I want to keep my options open. There are things going on in this scene. We, we get now. What are you staring at? Oh, he's cute. Too bad he's taken. What do you mean? Well, I don't think that's his sister. No, not him. Rachel, are you okay? The old guy. Yeah, I forgot the old guy. And we find out that the character has been staring at a ghost. Just kidding. Yeah, too bad he's taken you ready to go. What we have here are two stories running simultaneously. This is a war between the realistic dialogue and the relevant conflict, and these two girls are the casualties. Fix number one, dialogue must emulate rather than imitate life. We are listening to a conversation that sounds very real. And in the, the larger context of the story, the fact that they're talking about the school that they want to go to may matter. But it does not matter in relationship to the scene. For an example, look for issues that are related to the point of the scene, which is the arrival of the supernatural and build the dialogue around one of those. These can be things like a sense of fear, a change of temperature, an out-of-place smell or sound. Fix number two. Every word of well-written fiction moves the scene forward. The storyteller chooses conflicts that build to action. Conflicts are not things that you just, they just pop into your head and you, you write them down um, regardless of what they are about. You, you as the storyteller, figure out what your conflicts are going to be and you specifically write those things. 
For an example, um, I redid some of the dialogue. Uh, I hate this time of year. The weather goes from hot to cold so fast. Are you kidding? I'm melting. Oh my God, you're covered with goosebumps. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I can see my breath. This is something related to a sudden change of temperature, which we could find out later heralds the arrival of the supernatural, but it does so in a way that engages both of the characters and throws them into a conflict with each other. Fix number three. Every element in a scene must be connected in some fashion. While the girls' discussion of future schools and even cute guys may matter later in the story, it does not bring to life the main character's slow realization that the supernatural is present. Okay, I'm going to take us to a bit of, of exposition here. I looked at Lisa, blissfully eating her sandwich, lightly sheened with sweat, and at the couple walking past me, fanning themselves. Yet I could see my own breath, and the breath of the guy on the bench across from ours, the guy who was staring at me. This again ties in what the characters are doing with something that has changed that relates to the core of the scene. The biggest fix, however, is the ghostly girls. When you are writing a scene, you must, before you ever put down the first word, define the point of your scene. You do this before you write it, and then you write the scene to your point. The writer's point here is to throw one of the two girls into direct con contact with the supernatural, while leaving the other girl out of this contact. And my example of writing down the point of the scene would be college-bound co-ed picks up a ghostly stalker while her friend remains oblivious to his presence. In the case of the ghostly girls you've seen, a dialogue relevance crash, writing dialogue to imitate life by sounding real rather than to present a story conflict. A dialogue action crash, avoiding dialogue that leads to core conflict tied directly to the central point of the scene. An element connection crash, failing to integrate the scene's action, dialogue, and setting, which would allow action and dialogue to act as description without requiring exposition. This is a trick that a lot of writers don't realize is possible. Your action and your dialogue can be description if you are focusing on your core of your scene. And finally, and the big one, a scene planning crash, failing to clearly define the scene's characters, conflict, and twist before writing the scene. Writer crash tests. I do them because all writers make mistakes. Working writers learn how to fix them. Learn to crash test your own writing from me, Holly Lyle, novelist, writing teacher, writer crash tester. Go to writercrashtest.com.